Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're going straight into looking at what major stories are making headlines uh, this morning, Monday morning, the 15th of March, 2021. And I'm going to be starting with the Punch newspapers just before we introduce our guests. Uh, we're going to go through all the papers. So the Punch this morning, big one there. Petrol subsidy to gulp 102.96 billion naira in March. Pump price doesn't reflect market forces. Petrol being subsidized says NNPC. Uh, private sector won't invest in oil sector if subsidy continues, and that's from the LCCI. Gunmen who killed six family members in Oshun community demanded money, and that's from the victim's son. Also on the punch, Burner Boy makes history, clinches Grammy, Whiskey wins with Beyonce. And uh, we also have Asari Dokobo declares self new Biafran Bodies leader, names his officials also. 2,799 workers change pension firms, move 18.89 billion naira. Also, ASU wants a fresh strike over unremitted deductions. And also this morning, USSD disconnection, Mephile, Pantami, Dambata, meet telcos and banks today. And uh, once again on security, school invasion, Kaduna students' uh, parents meet school management. Those are the major ones on the Punch newspapers this morning. All right, I am going to the Nation newspaper and uh, the banner story reads, Gone men kill policemen, eight others in Oshun, Ikiti, Bauchi. The writer says, family of six among dead, troops fall kidnap attempt on 307 pupils in Kaduna. Lawan to Southeast, it's time to move to the center. Grammys win a delight, says Burner Boy. Whiskey to a Savage also clinched awards. Criticism trail CBN's policy as Naira weakens. Insurance industry capital base crashes to $1 billion. Power should shift south in 2023, says Undemi. Dealers seek extension of tariff cuts to minivans and cars. Asu threatens strike over pay. NAFDAQ destroys fake vaccines and others. Quara APC leader dies. EFCC detains Ondo Assembly clerk and others. And we see a very worrying picture here of the Oshodia Papa Lagos Expressway blocked again by tanker and truck drivers. All right, so let's move to the Guardian newspapers next. Uh, the big one there says transparency concerns uh, dog. Uh, or rather, transparency concerns, dog proposed sale of refineries. Uh, decouple BPE for mainstream bureau bureaucracy, says uh, Yusuf. Also this morning, suspense as telcos await ministers' stands before switching off banks' USSD service. Experts say the sector, uh, sector's regulation on its knees and will impact investment negatively. Another strike looms over unpaid ID um, a month salary. Uh, Asu warns, and terrorists kill one, abduct uh, six in Niger community. Uh, two others this morning avoid conflict with South South uh, governors over NDDC. Akpabio warns, and rainstorm wrecks havoc, blows off 200 houses in Ikiti State. Yeah, welcome to the rainy season here in Nigeria. Good morning once again. Yes, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Tunde Kolawali. Thanks for having me, my sister. All right. I uh, would appreciate it if you could uh, speak up a bit more so we can hear you clearly. Yeah. Okay. So we've just taken a look at uh, the Guardian newspaper, the Punch, and the Nigerian, uh, the Nation newspapers. And big stories really talked about politics, especially this fuel subsidy issue, the fuel price hike. Um, where would you like to start from this morning? Well, uh, Permit me to start from this fuel subsidy issue. You will recollect that um, when the president political party, I mean the party that is in power today, were campaigning, what they told all Nigerians was that there was no fuel subsidy being uh, paid to oil importers by the government. And they also said that when they get in there, they will abolish the subsidy regime. Unfortunately, they have been in power now 
for almost six or seven, I mean, for almost uh, six or five years. And they themselves have been paying for subsidies. So something doesn't gel in there. The truth of the matter is that uh, subsidy in Nigeria is a scam. Why do I say it's a scam? When Buhari first came in, and when he had tried to stop the payment of fuel subsidy, you will note that most people who were in the business of importing fuel into Nigeria abandoned that business. They went to some other they went to some other businesses simply because they knew that the game was up. If that be the case, what has now changed? And let us even assume that subsidies are being paid. What stops us since we returned to Cebu in 1999 in rehabilitating our own refineries? Petroleum refining is not rocket science. It has always been done in the last 100 years or thereabout. And there are so many petroleum refinery uh, plants in the world that are more than 100 years old that are still functioning. So why would our own, that is less than 50 years, I mean, even less than 35 or 40 years old, now become obsolete? Especially with the colossal amount of money that we have been putting into their turnaround maintenance on a yearly basis. For me, this subsidies campaign is the plight of the Nigerian nation. It is a shame. It shouldn't be an excuse that we should continue to hear from the Nigerian airline. It shouldn't be an excuse that we should continue to hear from any political party. It shouldn't That's be right. an excuse that we should continue to hear from any government in power in Nigeria. Governments are there to find solutions to problems, not to begin to moan and complain about them. This doesn't gel for me, like earlier on said. It's a very, very shameful thing. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to have you know a longer conversation about this um, on the breakfast this morning, but l let's move to talking about ASU now and the threats of another strike. They're talking about um, unremitted um, deductions. What's, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, honestly speaking, I have a lot of friends who are members of uh, ASU. Uh, while I sympathize with them over the poor funding of education, over the non-payment of whatever government Government requires to pay them. I have always told my friends that I don't think that their approach to solving the problems in the academic sector is the appropriate one. Why do I say this? There is hardly any aspect of our lives that is properly funded, that is properly managed, whether they be hospital, whether they be infrastructure, or whether they be social benefit scheme, or whatever they call it. It's a general problem. So that's why I've always advised the ASO people that why don't you concentrate on good governance? If you concentrate on good governance, if you help the Nigerian society get people who know what it takes to run government into power, the possibilities are that they will look into proper financing and management of all areas of our lives, including education. But it would appear to me that the ASU people are not disposed in that direction. Rather, they have had this very narrow, myopic, and selfish attitude to the whole thing. Uh, university lecturers want to be paid differential salaries. Judges want to be paid differential salaries. Medical doctors want to be paid differential salaries. When you and I do know but that the lowly cleaner that the chef, that the driver in the ministry are all contributing to the same bread basket and they all require to be properly taken care of in terms of housing, in terms of hospital, in terms of uh, medical uh, facilities, provisions and all that. If all monies are allocated to the judiciary, 
if the professor earned jumbo salaries and we are unable to take care of these other areas of our lives, what is going to become the lot of the rest of the society? It is because of that I've always advised us to, to concentrate on good governance. The approach today, their methodology, would appear to me to be very, very selfish and non-sustainable. I'm also not comfortable with a situation in which people will not work for two years, like as we have not done, and insist on being paid salaries for those two years that they have never worked. There is nowhere in the world where that is ever done. It's also strange that university professors around here will uh, build their own lives around salaries and emoluments coming from government. In some other parts of the world, university professors are consultants to governments, to private companies, to individuals. Well, what, what, they also what, write what, books. Uh, they are it? always on the lecture circuit. Is that, like, that is where I, they I, make their money. I don't know if you that is where that, they find uh, their comfort. Mr. Mr. Kolawole. I don't know if you'd agree that not, not all of them will be consultants, not all of them would be you know, book writers, not all of them would be able to do the research. There's definitely going to be those ones. And at the same time, even if they are consultants and they are book writers and the, and the, and the, and the rest, they still deserve their monthly remuneration from you know, government, regardless. So you know, the agree. fact that they're making money from you know, other sources shouldn't you know, diminish you know, the importance of them being paid their wages from government. And... I'm not sure what you would suggest as a better approach uh, for ASU, demanding you know, a better university system, better funding for the ed education system, and you know, all of th these things that they're demanding. Well, I don't know when last uh, you patronized uh, any of our public hospitals. I don't know last when you used the Lagos at the express road. I am sure you are aware of the massive oil pollution in the Niger Delta. Don't, those, don't you think those places also deserve attention? Absolutely. Uh, the truth of the matter is that the methodology of ASO is not sustainable, it's not workable. Until we have good governance, no aspect of our life is going to be properly funded. The medical doctors are also being old salaries. The ordinary teacher in the primary and secondary school are old salaries. So that is the reason why I think I should require to change its approach. Until we have had good governance in this country, there is no areas of our life that is going to be properly financed. But the university professors require to show better example because they are the better educated. They are more cosmopolitan. Okay. They see what happens in some other places. All right, Imagine, only... let me give you an example. Universities complain of uh, lack of power supply. They complain of lack of water. They complain of poor infrastructure. When they do have the Department of Electrical Electronics, Civil Engineering, in some other countries of the world, universities are self-sustaining. They generate their own water. They provide their own power. Uh, their own computer software, they design it. At the time, I'm aware that Berkeley University does not use software provided by or manufactured by Apple or by Bill Gates uh, and what have you. They design their own system. We are not seeing that kind of a thing from uh, our own university professors here. And that is the reason I'm not comfortable with their methodology right. and approach to getting a better education. All right. On the, on the nation uh, this morning, it also says that uh, power should move uh, or shift to the south in 2023, and that is from uh, Ali Undume. Um, quick reaction to that also. Well, honestly speaking, I am a Nigerian a patriot. I really don't believe in this uh, power shift thing. My position has always been that let's always put our best brain, our best foot forward. If it is a Calabari man, that can deliver good governance, that can provide the infrastructure, that has the wherewithal to generate jobs. Let him be president for all of the eight years. If it is a Kanuri man that has the wherewithal to run Nigeria efficiently, let him be a society that not put his best foot forward. 
that does not allow his best hand to manage his affairs can never develop, can never find solutions to our problems. But we are in a quandary in the sense that even the Constitution provides for what we call federal character principle, uh, gender equality, and all this is so that the weaker people or the less privileged people in the society can be carried along. So for the time being, we can be doing the rotational thing, but that should not be the ultimate goal. Because anywhere you don't have your best hand managing your affairs, you can never get good results. Mm. Well, if it is the decision of the different political parties that power should move to the south in 2023, then they must make sure that when that power is coming to the south, it is the best hand from the south that should be given that power so that we don't have a continuation of the clueless government that we have in power today. Okay. Um, so we, there's a story here about NAVDAC destroying about two billion naira worth of vaccines, uh, fake vaccines. And vaccination has been a big issue in the past uh, few months in the country. We know that vaccines have arrived in Nigeria. Um, and the federal government has begun vaccinating the top politicians and healthcare workers. But the story here now is that NAVDAC has made a bust. Two billion naira worth of fake vaccines. How, how you know, bad is this threat, seeing that lots of people want to be vaccinated against the virus, but fake drugs are you know, making their way into the country through the borders? Mm. Well, it has always, uh, fake drug has always been a challenge for us as a people. You will remember that uh, Professor Dora Akinyuli made a name when she was um, the DG of NAVDAC from the fight against uh, uh, fake drugs. The reality is that uh, when a society is corrupt and the elite unconscionable, the selfish and greedy, there is nothing they will not do to make money. That is the reason why we continue to have this issue of fake drugs. Let me give you a small anecdote. You will recollect that when the late uh, uh, former governor Jumabi of Foyo State was sick, the story we read in the social media was that uh, some comment sold a dummy to him that um, a drug for, uh, for COVID had already been produced in one country. And we were told that he was asked to bring uh, 50 million is in Naira or dollar and also somebody provided a private jet that they went to use for the COVID uh, vaccine. Lo and Bio, when that COVID vaccine was brought back to him, it was chalk that was said to be seen putting some capsules that was sold to Ajuma B as uh, a drug against uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, so that has always been a challenge. Okay, Mr. The Kolo truth of the matter is the amount of money we have spent either doing propaganda with regards to this COVID thing and importing this uh, uh, vaccine. Is it not enough for us to provide vaccine, to produce vaccine in Nigeria? Vaccine production is not new to Nigeria. We had in the past done it. This country had the, some of the best virologists. In the past, in the people of Tam David West and the rest of them. So what has happened before now? So if we were producing vaccines in Nigeria and we have a way to control it, and people like NAVDAC are on top of their game, the challenges of fake drugs wouldn't be as rampant as it is. If we had also fought corruption diligently, the way and manner it should be fought, incidences of um, a fake vaccine wouldn't be coming up as it is today. But, okay. but the so government... We require, yeah. You can continue with the same um, uh, topic. The, the government um, announced that it was investing uh, 10 billion naira into vaccine production a few weeks ago. Uh, don't, you, don't you have any trust in, the, in that um, investment? No, I don't. I don't. Simply because uh, the facilities um, that we require to produce this vaccine, which we used to have in the past, 
has become obsolete. So totally obsolete. You require to put the facilities on ground before you start throwing money into the problem. And these facilities don't come this cheap. People who manufacture those equipment, you have to put, I mean, uh, make another. And when you make another, it takes time before they will be able to produce for you. If the people in government were really sincere in producing this vaccine locally, what they would have done is to have assembled the major drug manufacturers in the country like EMSO, VISA, and the rest of them, and then bring in the university teachers and the virologists, throw them into a pool, and challenge them, make resources available to be able to produce this uh, uh, vaccine. And not for the people in government, the civil service, in the ministry, to say that they have here marked 10 billion naira for vaccine production. All right, Mr. Since Kalawani, they, yeah. um, I, I wanted us to turn our focus now to um, this issue. It's the APAPA traffic. We know how the Lagos State Government mentioned the collaboration with the Nigerian Port Authority that they were going to rid, you know, uh, Lagos of the Apapa traffic. And I remember Song Olu saying the Apapa traffic will be a thing of the past, will become history. They each started the call-up system. They asked truck drivers to, you know, download the ETO app, you know, upload all your trucks on the app. And it seemed great for a couple of weeks. But recently now, we've seen that the truck drivers have returned to the roads, the Osho de Apapa roads now, you see that tanker, uh, you know, have, have blocked the roads causing traffic. Would you say one of our issues here is, is not necessarily starting great initiatives, but sustaining them? No, it's uh, far deeper than that. It's far deeper than that. Okay. The truth of the matter is that uh, those who have benefited from the chaos that we have in Nigeria today, each time you try to put in a new system, that will make the system work efficiently, smoothly, and seamlessly. They will always find a way to throw some spanners into the that wheel of progress. That is the major challenge. I challenge you to do your investigation. In all areas of our lives, that we have tried to inject technology, like computerization and all that, we have always become the worst for it. I give you an example. We have been computerizing the court processes in Nigeria for the past 15 years now, you will not believe it that it is more cumbersome to file papers in our courts in Nigeria today than when we never injected computerization into the court procedure. And what is the reason for it? Most time when we say we are inventing and putting new technology into, into some of these uh, organizations, we don't approach it the way and manner it should be done. It is approached from a very selfish perspective, from the pecuniary benefit that certain persons will benefit, mostly people in government, mostly civil servants, and then the, and their cronies. That is why these things don't work. And then with the Apapa thing, you require an holistic approach. If since this uh, tragedy started, we have started building some rail lines, so some dry ports in some water in the Korodu, in Nepe, in Badagri. Wouldn't be that a better solution? A railway line construction for carrying goods and heavy duty materials is not rocket science. You can uh, uh, lay the asphalt, buy the railway uh, uh, slippers, and then the coaches that will carry them, instead of this funky approach to railway engineering and construction that we have always adopted. Furthermore, you and I will know that most of the people that will be given the responsibility of designing some of these softwares, some of these call systems that they say they have introduced, are people who necessarily may not have the necessary expertise to do some of these things. They are just giving the job because they are friends to politicians. They finance people who get into these political offices. And one way or the other, they must be paid back. Or the politicians want to enrich their friends. They want to enrich their relations. They want to enrich their cronies. And so the system from the one, a been show, is designed to fail, is designed to collapse. Mm. Furthermore, like I said, and more importantly, what stops us, the Badagri port that we've been proposing to build all this while, 
the lucky port that we have been producing, to, that we have been proposing uh, to build. What has stopped us since the last 20 years that we have returned to civil rule from building those uh, ports? The truth of the matter is that uh, even the chair lady in the MPA today will not want another port to be built in the south where right. we don't want another Hello, port Ali. to be built in Lagos simply because they see some of these things as advancing the progress of the southwest. They are not looking at it in terms of the services, the comfort, and right. the ease that building two other ports in Lagos will provide for the entire Nigerian people. Nicola, they see that the north versus south as east versus west. Yeah, thank you very much. We would have to um, end it here. Um, but of course, we appreciate your time and your thoughts this morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Stay you blessed. Too. You too. All right, uh, still here on uh, Plus TV Africa's uh, Breakfast. We'll take a short break. When we come back, of course, we'll go straight into our first major conversation for this morning. Stay with us.